If you think back to section 5.4, uh, we were taking derivatives and integrals of the natural uh, exponential function. That is to say, uh, it was e to the power of x. Um, and remember, e was just a number. Uh, but we don't always have to have e as the base. Uh, we can have other bases um, other than the number e. So those are what we're going to look at. We're going to look at taking derivatives and integrals of bases other than e. Now a little review of some of the laws of exponents uh, that uh, we need to know when we're dealing with bases. Uh, so if we have a base of a raised to a zero power, anything to the zero power is just one. If we have two bases of a being multiplied, we add the powers together to simplify that. If we have two bases of a being divided, we take the top power and subtract away the bottom power to simplify that. And if we have a base of a to a power and then raised to another power, we take those two powers and multiply them. So luckily these are just all the little laws of exponents you've known since Algebra 1, but just a little reminder of them in case we need them uh, when we're doing problems uh, with these bases other than e. Uh, please take note of this little change base formula. You really won't need this for this course. Uh, it's just included here to be thorough in terms of bases other than e. If you ever need to change a natural log of some base, you can use natural logs to do that. Uh, so I won't expand on that process. I just want to give you that formula just to be thorough here with this process, but you really won't need this for this course. On the other hand, this part is very important. We need to now know, uh, or to be able to distinguish between variables and constants when we're doing problems. Now that we're using this e a lot, a lot of the times a common mistake is to mistake that e for a variable. Remember, e is just a number. So we have to treat it that way. So in certain problems, maybe it can throw you off depending on the way that it's written. So in this first example, we are asked to take the derivative with respect to x of e to the e. Remember, e is just a number, 2.7, dot, dot, dot. If we have e to the e power, that's just a constant. It's some number. e is a number, and then the power of e is just a number. So e to the e is just a constant, and we know the derivative of a constant is equal to 0. In this second example, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of e to the x. Well, we just learned that uh, in 5.4. The derivative of e to the x is itself e to the x. And just notice, in this case, we have a number, which is e, to a power of x. What if we switch that? What if we make x the base and we make e the power? Well, to take this derivative, that's essentially like taking the derivative of x squared or x cubed. e is just a number. So we can apply the power rule to take this derivative. What we would do is bring the power down, which is the e, and then reduce the power by 1, so e minus 1. So again, x to the e is a very straightforward derivative if you look at it as just x to a constant. Okay, now what about the last possibility that we haven't addressed? In this second example, we did a number to the power of x, which was an exponential function. In this third example, we did x to a constant, which we've known how to do since chapter 2. But how do we take the derivative of an x to an x power, where both the base and the power are variables? Well, in this case, we're going to have to use something called logarithmic differentiation. And it's really, tied it's really easy to identify a problem that needs this, is when you have a base of x and a power of x of some sort. So it's a few steps we got to go through, so we're going to take uh, our problem through these uh, few steps. The first step is to take the natural log of both sides and simplify. So of course the natural log of y is just ln y. When we take the natural log of x to the x on the other hand, we can use the property that allows us to take this power of x on the inside of a natural log and move it to the front of the natural log. So that's why we have x ln x. Okay, so let's talk about taking the derivative of both sides because now we can do that. On the left side we have ln y. 
So just think back to 5.1. When, when we took the derivative of ln x, that was 1 over x. So I guess by analogy, the derivative of ln y must be 1 over y. But you're going to have to remember one little subject we studied way back in 2.5 called implicit differentiation. When you integrate a y with respect to x, we have to throw in a dy dx. So be careful when you uh, do these derivatives of y. We still have to follow that rule we learned way back in chapter 2. Okay, uh, that's actually not how I'm going to write it though. Um, I want to write this a little more compact, and instead of writing it as dy over dx, I'm just going to write y prime. And of course, if I write that as y prime, I can make this one fraction where, where I write y prime over y. So I just wanted to show how I got to this version of the way I'm writing it. But remember, what got us here was what I just erased, 1 over y times dy dx. On the right side here, we've actually done this problem before. We have two functions being multiplied, so that's going to need the product rule. And if you want to refer back to um, 5.1 for this, when we took the derivative of this, we ended up with, using the product rule, we ended up with 1 times ln x plus x times 1 over x, which simplifies just to be uh, 1 plus ln x. The third step is to solve for y prime. Remember, we're trying to find the derivative of this equation, y uh, equals x to the x. So we're trying to solve for y prime, which is nice and simple. We just need to multiply that y to the other side. The last step is to take the y and substitute for it. We know y is equal to x to the x. So we can take that and substitute that in. So our final answer is going to be x to the x times 1 plus ln x, and that is our derivative. Okay, now we're going to do three quick examples uh, showing how to use the formulas for taking derivatives of bases other than e. So for this first one, be aware that a is some constant raised to some stuff, possibly. It might be a plain x, but it's most likely going to be stuff. So to take this derivative, it's actually a lot like the derivative of e to the u that we saw back in 5.4. So if you want to jot this down on the margins of your notes, you can, since I'm going to use this space to do a problem right here. But it turned out that the derivative of e to the u was itself. It was e to the u times u prime. So you'll notice, when we have a base of something other than e, it's a very similar answer. You'll see that the derivative of a to the u is a to the u itself times u prime, just like the derivative of e to the u. There's one extra addition where we have to multiply by the uh, natural log of the base that we're using in the problem. And remember, this a can be any constant. It's not an e in this case, though. Okay, so let's practice. Let's take the derivative of 2 to the 3x power. That's an exponential function, so we can use this derivative here. So let's go ahead and go through the process. Our base is uh, 2 here, which is our a, so the derivative would be equal to ln 2 times itself, 2 to the 3x. But since it's not a plain x in the power, we need to multiply by the derivative of u, which is 3. The derivative of 3x is 3, and just to clean this up a little like we've always done, we're going to pull that uh, u prime to the front uh, with the ln 2, and the final answer is 3 ln 2 times 2 to the 3x power. Uh, what about a natural log? Um, we took derivatives of, I'm sorry, what about a log? We've taken derivatives of natural logs, uh, but what if it was a log of some other base? Well, again, kind of think back to something we've seen before. If you want to take the derivative of a natural log, actually I need to write that with a u. So if you want to take the derivative of ln u, that was equal to 1 over u times u prime. But what if we have a log of some other base? Remember, an ln is really a log of base e. But what if we have a different base, like an a, some other number? Well, you'll notice the derivative is very similar. We still have the 1 over u part right here times u prime. But in the bottom of this fraction, we're going to have to multiply by ln of the base a. 
which is very similar to the one we just did a moment ago. Okay, so now let's look at the example to illustrate this. Here we want to take the derivative with respect to x of log cosine x. So something to keep in mind is when we don't have a um, base written on our logs, we know that's a, or we assume that that's a log of base 10. So to take this derivative, ra is equal to 10. You'll notice that a is 10 in this case. So it's going to be 1 over ln 10, and then our function on the inside, this is our u here, the function on the inside of our log is cosine x. So it's going to be 1 over ln 10 cosine x. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of u. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, we can take this negative sign, which is really over 1, and multiply it so we can have one big fraction here. So we'll end up with negative sign over ln 10 cosine x. And I'm not boxing this as the answer because we can go one step further. Sine over cosine, this part of the fraction, can be simplified to be tangent. So our final answer we can write here is negative 10x over ln 10. Okay, one more little problem we need to address here, and that's integrating bases other than e. Again, as an analogy, just so you don't forget this, the integral of e to the u du was equal to e to the u plus c. When the base is not an e, you'll notice it changes a little. You can see the integral of a to the u is still itself a to the u. The only extra addition when we're dealing with bases other than e is we need to multiply by 1 over ln a. Okay, so now that we see that this is similar to what we've done before, let's practice this using uh, this integral. We don't see a plain x in our power here, so that's what's going to be our u. If we call that u, we end up with our typical dilemma when we're doing these u substitution problems. We have u's with x's, we can't have that, so we need to come over to our u box to take care of that. We're trying to get rid of an x dx. We see an x dx right here, but no negative 2 in our problem. That's not an issue, we just have to divide that negative 2 to the other side, and wherever we see an x dx, we're going to replace it with a negative 1 half du. And of course that negative one half we'll just put in front of the integral. Now we turned our problem into this formula up here. The integral of a to the u is 1 over ln a, so it's going to be 1 over ln 5 times a to the u, or 5 to the u. And again we still have our negative half sitting in front. Of course we need to finalize this answer uh, so that it doesn't have u's in it. And then on top of that, I'm going to simplify these two fractions that are being multiplied in the front. So we're going to end up with 2 times ln 5 in the bottom of our fraction. And then the top of the fraction will have 5 to the negative x squared. And then that whole fraction is negative, plus c.